What's cracking Jump Nation family? It's your boy here, Rushi Yes, aka the Jump Rope Coach. In today's video, guys, I'm gonna be taking you through a combination masterclass. I recorded this clip a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to share it with you every single step, every single jump in detail. So check this one out in three, two, one. Let's roll it. There you have it guys, I hope you're excited as I am for this video. Basically, I'm gonna split this into two parts, okay? There's, there's just a lot to get through and I'm a stickler for super long tutorials. Uh, your mind's just gonna wonder and you're gonna get bored probably. But what I want you to do quickly is hit that like button. If this video gets 500 likes in the next kind of couple of days or so, I will get part two out for you and you'll see the rest of the combination. So get that done right now, hit that like button and also you need to make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part two. That's that done. Guys, wherever you are in the world, hope you're keeping safe. Uh, it has been six weeks of lockdown here in the UK. The sun is finally out. Uh, nothing's really changed on our side, but hopefully where you are, hope your friends and family and everyone are keeping well. A uh, few quick announcements as I do before I get into my videos. Uh, I will usually have told you to go online and pick this bad boy up. This is the money rope, the most in-demand speed rope on the planet. I'll tell you to go down to my website, use YouTube 10 for your 10% discount. However, we are completely sold out and new stock is arriving in about three to four weeks. So you need to get onto my website, subscribe to my newsletter, and you'll be first to know when they are back. Also with the mats and everything else, anything you see stocked out on my website right now, they will be back in June, early June, hopefully. There are a few ropes online still, including the Icon rope and Legacy rope. So without further ado, guys, we get straight into this tutorial. The first part of that combination is the Mayweather under leg pass. I don't really know the official name for it. I've been doing it for a number of years now, but listen, the, the under leg pass, right, is a, um, a very slick, very smooth looking move. And I'm gonna talk you through where I see beginners going wrong and how I can get you to make it look even slicker and every, even smoother even, right? So when I'm doing this move, peeps, you just need to really make sure that your rope is not too long so you don't get a lot of drag on the floor. If you can see here, like the rope is just dragging on the floor. You need to be really kind of nimble with your legs and it's all about your wrist positioning and your handling of the skipping rope, okay? So this is, this is not gonna be easy, but I've got a tutorial to break this one down as well. So go back and check that, but we're gonna cover this quite quickly right now. The main thing of just doing that first bit of the move, right, is you wanna start to make sure that you are bouncing in time with your rope before you start the, the kind of under leg pass, okay? And when it comes to doing the under leg pass, what you need to really remember with your wrists is you wanna make sure that they're tight. They're just doing this, and when you're passing with your left hand, you get that kind of ambidextrous kind of skill of being able to mirror what your right hand does with your left hand. What beginners tend to do is when they, with their stronger hand, for example, I mean, I'm left-handed, I write with my left hand, but for some reason I, I like to swing the rope with my, my right hand, it's a bit weird. But what some, some kind of uh, beginners or kind of those who are even intermediate is they're really good on one side and when it comes to passing over, they're just really awkward with their kind of weaker hand. So what you need to do is just make sure that you can get the action mirrored and what you really need to do is when you're flinging it over your, flinging it, when you're kind of, yeah, swinging it under your leg, you want to get that whip. You want to keep the rope still moving at the same speed. Where the beginners go wrong sometimes is when they go under their leg, the rope slows down, it drags, like I said, and it doesn't go smoothly. It doesn't kind of move fluidly through the leg. So you need to get practicing on listening where that, where that little swoosh of the rope is. If you can get that swoosh, boom, right through the rope, boom right through the legs even. Um, I'm just kind of exaggerating the move, but when you come to doing it smoothly, again, you need to mirror your legs. You need to make sure your legs go at the same height. When you're passing, you don't want, you don't want one leg kind of going lower, one leg going higher. So that's the first part, right? You just want to make sure that you make it look smooth, guys. Mirror from the left and to the right. When it comes to your hand action, you want to be turning your wrists. I'm going to come to camera B. You're going to turn your wrists under your legs, like so, right? Boom and you want the rope arc, the pattern of the rope to be moving kind of lateral, lateral, parallel to your body. You don't want it kind of coming out to the side either. 
A lot of beginners do this. Really untidy. You want the rope passing right beside your body, okay? I'm just gonna go do this part slowly. I'm gonna hopefully get the faster version like next to me as well. Now, a lot of you are gonna ask me now, how the hell do you come out of that with the rope being tangled and then start skipping? Now, again, I've got a tutorial on this one, but you have to be able to understand your rope. Um, when you're swinging it through the air here, it's naturally gonna get tangled. But the key part is when you come out of here and you'll see on the video, I go into a couple of one-handed side swings and in those one-handed side swings, I'm now getting my index finger in between the rope. This happens so quick, really, uh, really smooth the way this happens. You gotta, again, understand how your skipping rope works, but you've gotta get that index finger inside that rope so that when you come to passing it, it opens up and then it untangles itself with the side swings. Again, got tutorials on this, go check it out. But that's the first part of this combination. Right, so I've got the neighbor drilling, doing something. I don't know if you can hear him, but hopefully it's not too annoying. Right, so here we go. So we've done one, two, three, and then four. Now I get the index finger in the rope, untangle it, one skip, and then I go straight into side swing, kind of crosses with a run, all right? This part of the combination, this is where it starts to build up the speed, the tempo, we start to build it up. Now, as I said before, guys, you wanna stay balanced. You wanna make sure that the, the rope is moving at the same speed when you're doing these kind of combinations. Your feet need to move at the same speed. I've talked about this in countless tutorials. This is why this tutorial is gonna be something for beginners all the way up into advanced, because those who can even do the moves fail to remember that sometimes things need to move in sync by moving at the same speed. So some people might be able to do a side swing cross, but then their footwork is just not sharp enough and it, it looks kind of, I don't know, what's the word, but it looks kind of edgy. It just doesn't look fluid, all right? Edgy is not the right word blatantly, but anyway, so as you come to open up the rope, as I said, you come from the side swings, we go here, one hop. As I do that one hop, it comes off my stronger leg, which is the right leg, and then I go straight into those side swing cross run. Boom, boom. With this move, right, again, you want to mirror everything. Uh, a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about is about mirroring. You want both sides to look just as smooth and just as just like the other side really so when you're doing this run pattern one two notice how my hands are close to my body they don't come away from my body one of the biggest things that i see those who don't really do this move well is that they swing their hands well away from their body to cross like this obviously they do that because they want to make sure that they can jump through the rope right they want to make sure that the loop is big enough as they go for the side swing cross again i've got a tutorial on this move but a tip for today as this combination kind of unfolds itself is we want to make sure that the hands are super close to the body. So when you are doing this run now, it just looks again, super slick, super effortless. The loops are just about wide enough to pass your body. And by doing it like this, like I said, you don't lose time. It doesn't lose the kind of action, the speed. You wanna make sure it's close, whip. Now, if you start to smack yourself, whack your back, very possible. <laughs> it's skipping, it's not easy, it's dangerous. Um, just, just change your technique, right? Change the, the, the length of the rope maybe, tinker with it, tinker with your arms a little bit, but just make sure you make it small enough so you can go through it. Second part is the footwork, right? Remember what I said to you about the footwork? The rope moves in, in sync with your footwork, okay? The feet are just like a little engine. If you could disconnect your feet from your kind of brain pattern and don't think about them too much, let the feet do their work. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's your rhythm. Then you go one, two, one, two, one, two. And you need to get the whip. As you cross, you need to get the whip on both hands. Hopefully you can see in camera B, boom, boom, okay? You need to make sure that that rope is moving. It's always moving because if you stop the, the kind of fluidity of the rope, the speed of the rope, combination doesn't look as smooth. It just breaks down, it doesn't make sense uh, on the eye. And that's when you can tell the difference between someone who really knows what they're doing with their rope and someone who's just kind of starting out, okay? And I want you to all fly boss, like I say. I want you to get it right. So just practice with the timing of your footwork, okay? One, two, one, two. And the drill of the one, two, when you start talking to yourself, it really does help, again, disconnect your feet or your, your legs from your brain. They keep moving like a little motor and then your hands start to do the kind of technical stuff, right? The technical work that's needed. Remember, you wanna make sure, again, your wrists are turning over as you cross and you're getting a good whip. Making sure you use the thumbs down the skipping rope here to direct where you want that rope to go. So that's the second part, guys. You're gonna do a couple of those and then we're gonna go into the big boy double under side swings. Right, so in this sequence, or in this pattern, things are moving at about, what's the word? 
four reps. I don't know how you call it. So under the leg pass, one, two, three, four, like we said. Then when you come to doing your side swing crosses, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, and then three, and then four. Now from here, this is super, super key, important. Everything's key when I'm talking in jump rope tutorials, I know. Uh, but this is absolutely like the, the biggest advice I can give you today, right? Is when I talk about footwork is king, this is exactly the little split moments, the split seconds where it makes such a big difference. You need to now set your feet up perfectly ready for that double under side swing, okay? Now, when I do this, it happens so quick, you probably don't really realize, but it's when I finish this move now, it's gonna be hard to show you this in slow motion. I set the feet just here, right at this point, and I'm gonna go into this move. Now, when I go into this move, the feet, like I said, stay in the same place. They don't shift, they don't move. And the idea is this move is so kind of dynamic. Um, it can lead to people swinging all over the place. You're swinging side swings. You're trying to do double unders at the same time, jump high. Your body's gonna twist at the same time. You wanna keep your core really engaged when you're doing this. So I'm gonna try and do this at medium speed. And I'm just watch my feet plant themselves. One, boom, boom, plant, boom. Now, when you, when you do this move, right? I've got, I've got a tutorial on this one as well. May have to reload because that was a couple of years ago. When you do do this move, your focus is keeping your chest as straight as possible, right? Because your hands are moving so quickly to get this double under side swing done. You know, you've got to jump high enough, get your hands over to each side, one, two, open, etc. Um, that you need to make sure that you're not twisting with the rope. And that's a common thing, common sort of theme for beginners, which is they don't have the, the kind of capacity at the moment to engage their core and stay straight. So trying to show you this move in slow motion is very difficult, but when you plant that foot, so here, one, two, plant, boom, boom, one, two, open, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is not a triple under, okay? It's a double under side swing. So the, there is a moment where, you, where you're planted, the rope hits the ground here, you take off, you're in, the, you're in the air now. Whilst you're in the air, you're swinging to the side here, then you open the rope, plant your feet, you go again, hits the ground, take off, you move to the side, you clear the rope as you as you open the rope. So from here, I go to my strong side first, left always, then right, then open. Just remember that the point to take away here is when you plant your feet, because that is what's gonna set the whole stage. I wanna say stage, that's not the right word, but that's what sets the whole kind of motion going, all right? If you set your, your feet wrong, you take off, you start moving with the side swings, it's not gonna look right. So focus on those key points. That is your double under side swing, done. So the next part to this combination is actually my favorite. It's always gonna be my favorite. It is the footwork component. Uh, what you're gonna do, right? Again, as you set off to do that double under side swing, um, you then have to land and again, have that same sort of balance, which is again, why I always talk about the importance of having balance and timing in executing these moves rather than speed. The double under side swing does look, a, look like a fast move. Of course it is. If I try and slow it down here, boom, boom. This is a really slow version. You land. Side swing, jump through the jump through the, the rope, for example. And then what you're gonna do is you're then gonna move into your footwork pattern. The footwork pattern that I love to use is this side to side step. This helps me basically get my balance back, all right? You see me using this a lot, simply because when I'm moving in and out of footwork patterns or drills and things like this, this step here is my go-to step. Again, I've showed a video on this, but it allows me to get my kind of center back, my balance, get my positioning right. And then from this side to side step, all that's happening is you're touching the mat at the same time, but one just kind of flicks out. Boom, 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 all right? So all you're doing is just replacing the middle foot with the other one, okay? When you found your balance, you then go into the rush step. Again, um, very difficult to kind of give that tutorial in its own right here, but literally, if you haven't tried it, all you're doing, here we go again. You get your balance here, all you're doing is you're putting one foot across you to the side, then behind you, all right? So it's, if you're looking at it from a face of a clock, for example, your right foot moves to 11 o'clock, to three o'clock, to seven o'clock, yeah? So 11, three, seven. With your left foot, it's gonna be kind of like two, nine, and four, yeah? I never really explained it like that, but it makes sense to me now. So that happens for a couple of reps, and then you'll see, not that, you'll see um, me then moving back to that middle step to get my balance back. And then we're gonna go into high knees, okay? Now with the high knees, I would love you guys to just make sure that when you are skipping, when you are, the leg that's jumping, when you're bringing this leg up, this is, a, this is really difficult, this move in terms of coordination. A lot of beginners out there, when they see me do this move and I'm trying to teach them, they just can't get the, the coordination of bringing that knee up. But the first thing I want you to focus on 
is that leg that's jumping that needs to clear the rope. It's one, two, one, two. That leg needs to jump twice and it needs to jump literally millimeters off the floor in perfect timing. Again, that's what's gonna make that step look really nice and smooth. So it's one, two, raise the knee, one, two, raise the knee, boom, boom, okay? You need to get that in time. And again, you wanna mirror how high your legs are going. You don't wanna kind of have one leg down and one leg up. You're gonna find which leg is your stronger leg. That happens at the beginning, but you gotta practice on both legs. And the way to do that is literally spend half an hour, 20 minutes, just doing this, skipping on one leg, trying to stay in the same position and then start to raise your knee up and down in time. Get used to that. Get used to then also changing the leg in time. Remember, look at my wrist. The wrists are moving at the same pace. One, two, one, two. It doesn't change. Where guys find it difficult is the, the wrists start to do different things because their legs can't keep up. Remember, we need to get these things in sync, matched up for it to look super slick. So that is a footwork component. Um, the next part does involve obviously footwork, everything does, but that's the kind of groundwork drills before we start now moving into the crossover component. Just remember guys, footwork is king, have to repeat that. Um, the most of the intermediates that I've seen that do combinations, they know all the advanced moves, but it's these patterns, these floor work patterns, footwork, which will separate you from the average Joe, I promise you. I used to spend hours and hours back in the day, literally just doing all types of footwork patterns. Make it muscle memory, make it so that your body can move in between these kind of patterns and, and kind of floor work and you'll tie everything together. So that's that stage complete. We're now gonna go into, uh, again, another advanced move and combination. Right, so after the footwork pattern is done, this is my next favorite sort of segment portion of the, the whole thing, right? And that is what we do is after we've done the high knees, I'm then gonna go into a double cross. What I do is I come in from a side swing, just like this. So transition from a side swing, so one, to transition from a side swing. I then change the step into a boxer uh, skip and then we go into that double cross, right? When you come to doing that double cross, one, two. The key part to that move um, is just to simply make sure that when you do do the, the cross, when you do kind of get into the first cross, you've done the first bit, right? You have to make sure your elbows and your arms are locked. One, from here, you need to make sure that you've got this all in the same place, all right? camera B all in the same place because if you then start to do this or move down or move higher after the first cross you're going to mess up the second bit so it's one and then in this position what you can do is you're going to change your footwork or keep your footwork sorry but you're going to just change your step that you're keeping the balance on because you're doing a boxer step so it's one two and you're going to rotate your wrists uh, and give that rope a little bit more of a push so it's one two make sure that you use your thumbs to get that rope around and again it needs to be the same speed of revolution to make it look really nice and slick. So we're here, one, two, you've done that bit. You go into your side swing, one, boom, boom, one, two. Right, you need to hear that swoosh. Yeah? After this bit, we then go into a side swing. You'll see, boom, boom, side swing, and then we go into a crossover variation, right? That little crossover variation I've shown before in the past, but all that looks like is you cross, then move to your side swing. You don't do the uncross. So I'll show you again. This is a normal crossover, cross, uncross. This is the, the, the move I'm showing you now. Cross, side swing, cross, side swing. You wanna make sure that when you cross, whichever hand is on top, usually a dominant side, right? When you cross, you move to that dominant side. You move to, for my case, I move to my left hand side and we go into that side swing. Once you've done this now, guys, we're gonna go into a side swing cross with a rushy hop, I'm gonna call it. This is a, a little sort of kind of aesthetic kind of look that I gave this move. So when you come to doing this, boom, boom, you're gonna hop on one leg now when you do this move. So you've just done that little cross variation here, and it's one, two. The side that you cross from, so that when I go to my left-hand side, for example, and then I cross, I hop with the left foot. As I go to the other side, I just do the opposite, just here, and then hop with the right foot, okay? That, if you can get that all done at the same speed, You've got that bit done. So we do a couple of those, and then we go into the, the kind of advanced move here, which is the side swing cross under, double type of thing, right? And I'll show you how that move looks. This move isn't easy. Um, takes a bit of time and practice. Again, I've got another tutorial that you can watch to do that. But what you're gonna do is once you've done these two moves, you're gonna set yourself up with a side swing. And you're gonna go into this move. As you come into this move, guys, I want you to do it from your stronger side. That's my left side. You're gonna take off with 
that side leg. Okay, so for my, in my instance, I'm gonna take off with my left leg. It's a one-legged jump, this move, right? So you're gonna jump into this with one leg. You're gonna side swing, cross here, boom, take off, and then as you're in the air, you just have to uncross the rope before you land on that same leg. So it's a kind of a, it is an advanced move, to be honest with you. Side swing, cross under. I don't know what I called it, I can't remember. Right, so nice and easy, gonna go as slow as I can. Hopefully that helps. It's not gonna be easy to do it slow, to be fair, but here we go, from the top. Side swing, cross, boom, boom. There you go. That is pretty much how you lock that, unlock it even. What's key about this side swing double cross under thing um, is when you lead up into the move, peeps, you have to make sure that that first cross as you go in, that's why I like to go in from a side swing, is wide enough to cross kind of past your body here. And then you have to remember that you're generating the speed with your wrists. You're now in the air, one legged, looking absolutely epic. Last thing you wanna do is slow this rope down. So what you need to do is get that revolution with this cross, and then you then gotta uncross your hands as you land, all right? It happens at a literally split second, really quick. Um, and you gotta be quick with your hands, but at the same time, you have to stay balanced. Like I always say, you gotta make sure that you're engaging your core. When you go into that one-legged jump, I sometimes tend to kind of flick it a little bit. I don't like to bend my knees, to be honest with you, when I'm skipping for any move. Like uh, it's just something that I don't like doing just for the nature of the impacts. But when you are doing this jump, if I didn't have the rope, this is what it would look like. Boom, 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 boom. So there is a little kick back there. And again, because you're skipping on one leg. So, you know, you're doing a double under on one leg. So you, it's just something that I do. And to be honest with you, it's a bit of an aesthetic thing as well, because when that's happening, you know, this, this leg is kind of coming forward. It's all about body shapes with me, man. It's all about making it look really nice, artistic as it were. So just, you don't want to be really clunky with it. You don't want to be kind of like out of balance. Just make sure that when you go into it, core engage, boom, boom, you know, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Like the timing has to be impeccable. Side swing, cross, boom, boom, there you go. And when you finish that move, when you've done the cross here, land, uncross before you land on the same leg, sorry. Get this off my head. You then go straight into a side swing, get your balance and start to get into the next part of the combination. Which, guys, we're gonna leave to part two. So if you made it up to this point, hopefully it's not too long of a tutorial, you're still with me, then do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Join the Hot Fitness community growing across the world today. We are flying boss like this, guys, making cardio epic again. Love to get you on board. Uh, we're 75,000 strong here on YouTube, and it is an amazing kind of feeling to get so many cool people on board. With quarantine and all the things that happen in the world, this is the thing to be doing right now. Wherever, anytime, anywhere, you don't need no expensive gym memberships, no expensive machines in your house, um, just your skipping rope peeps. Remember, you can head online, buy what you can buy. Got loads of different styles of ropes on offer right now. The money rope, the most in-demand speed rope on the planet, will be back in June. So again, sign up for the email notifications and also follow me on all my social media platforms for updates. Guys, it was a pleasure getting this done. It's been a while since I've put out a tutorial. Still out of breath, so you can see this is not easy. It's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of practice. Doesn't come overnight like I always, always, always say. Just keep practicing, be patient with it. Take the slaps with the slaps and um, just don't put the rope down. Whatever you do, don't put the rope down. It's gonna make a winner out of you. Stay focused, stay legendary. If you like this video, again, thumbs up. Comment below if you're gonna be catching part two, which is an absolute fire segment of the combination. And uh, lastly, have to say thank you to everyone who joined the Fly At Home Challenge. I'm editing that video as we speak tight, do this thing as well. Um, it's going on in the background. It will be out very soon and will be one of the most epic skipping videos, worldwide skipping videos ever created. So um, guys, I love you. As always, thank you for being so patient with me. Sorry about the mess in the background. It has been manic here at the HQ. A lot of things happening in the pipeline and it's all thanks to you. Um, that rhymed, that sounded good. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there, guys. So without further ado, take care of yourself. Skip the treadmill. Stay safe. Peace.